Welcome to Future Docs Podcast. My name is Pedro Mizani. I'm the Chief Clinical Officer at AC Medical, a family physician, and your co-host of Future Docs Podcast. And I am your co-host, Dr. Valen Rosas, a leadership intern at AC Medical. And as always, we invite you to watch the video version of this podcast by visiting youtube.com forward slash AC Medical Org. Episode 47 is our thoughts on USMLE Step 3. So this is very challenging for most because I think there's a lot of posts out there to take a USMLE Step 3. Even some so-called mentors have said that it's advantageous. So Dr. Mizani, what are your thoughts on USMLE Step 3? Would it be beneficial to take it for your ERAS or wait? Great question. I like to approach this you know, the question of whether I should take step three or not, you know, in phases. So if you're considering step three, then most likely you've passed step one, CK, OET, or if you're a U.S. medical graduate, you've graduated from med school and finished U.S. MLEs and, and somebody has told you, hey, go ahead and take step three. And that's what we require in order to consider offering you an interview or to rank you which is totally fine. And I can see why certain programs would do that. Programs that are afraid of bringing medical graduates that are, that don't fit into a mold, they want to somehow squeeze those medical graduates into a mold and come up with a satisfying reason that, Hey, I have some sort of a measuring stick that says this person is up to date on their medical knowledge. And so they may say step three, take step three. However, when even you need to take step three, that doesn't make you a better candidate, doesn't make you a better interviewer. What it does is that you pass another exam and you said, look, what I'm doing now is that uh, you don't have to worry about me not being licensable as a resident or after I graduate from residence. So you're not wasting your, your slot. However, typically programs don't think like that. They don't interview people and think, okay, well, I'm interviewing you. How do I know you're going to pass step three? They don't think like that. We don't think like that in an admission committee. So why does that even come up? This question for step three comes up most times for medical graduates. And that's if the programs generally believe that the candidates, if it's been a few years since they graduated, they're going to have problems with staying up to date with medicine. In our experience, passing step three has not improved the chances of individuals matching. It may check off a box and it would may keep them in the running, but it does not improve the chances of somebody matching. And then we got the program director survey issued by NRMP, which I invite all of you to look at. And then it solidified what we've been experiencing for the past two decades. So based on program director survey, Program directors do not look unanimously for step three. And the score on USMLE step three is ranked just barely above or below honors and basic sciences. So step three is not something that we generally recommend. What if you graduated years ago? Will that help if you take the step three? Let's say that you graduated years ago. Uh, Five, 10 years ago. It does not replace letters of recommendation. It does not replace recent clinical experiences. It does not replace being able to interview well. All it does is it says, look, I'm not going to fail an exam of this magnitude in residency. That's all it does say, which then makes you think, who should be taking step three? So from a program's perspective, the only people, and from our perspective, the only people that should consider taking step three is those that have had an attempt on their previous USMLEs. Because if you had an attempt on your previous USMLE, you're telling me I have the potential of failing in USMLE. If you have a potential of failing USMLE, it can happen again. And if it happens in residency, and if it happens two or three times, I just wasted a slot and training someone that I cannot get them to license while they're a resident with me. And if they repeat this exam too many times, they may not even be qualified or licensure in my state period, right? Let's say they took the exam two times, three times, step three. And so that's when it becomes an issue. So if you've had attempts on USMLE, step one, CK, CS, then I will probably tell you, you got to start studying for step three. But if you failed one of the previous USMLEs and you have a potential for failing step three, 
What are you going to do if you failed that and you haven't even gotten into residency? Lots of questions. So you only recommend taking step three for those who have multiple attempts and previous exams, any one of them. Very, very cautiously. Like there is a system for doing that. Number one, they need to treat like the year before they consider taking step three as if they were a resident. And so we get back into the type of clinicals that they're doing to prepare for step three. Step three is the test of internship. We well, can't really be doing internship stuff because you don't have a license to do it and you're not part of graduate medical education. So you have to do something that is similar to that. So if you really, if you have multiple attempts on USMLEs, then the best thing to do is to do four, five, six months of maybe postgraduate sub internship where you're in residency environments, you're, you know, clocking in at, at five o'clock in the morning, working with a resident, you're co-assigned to patients, you're rounding in the mornings, you're going on call and you're seeing these cases and you're, pre you're prepping for step three by, you know, practically doing things. And that's the best way to prepare for step three. So if you're doing that and you go for a step three prep course and you're scoring high enough to where you have a reasonable um, chance of passing this exam, then I think you're on the right path, but not just by sitting home and doing questions for a couple of months or even one year or two years or three years. It's not the way to pass step three. Some do it, but man, that's a lot of years to waste just to go in and take step three. So you're saying for preparation, uh, do clinical, clinical rotations? Postgraduate sub-internships. Postgraduate. Not just going to a private practice and be with a physician and do medical assisting work. You're wasting your time if that's how you're preparing for step three. You've got to be in an environment that mimics internship, residency. And the only type of environment that, that I know of that does that for somebody who's not in residency is a postgraduate sub-internship. And you got to do a lot of those months because uh, there was a reason why you failed at USMLA the first time. And you certainly don't want to fail it again, especially when it comes to step three. You don't want to fail the test of internship before you even get into internship. So postgraduate sub internship, proper step three preparation. I recommend institutions that specialize in people that retake USMLE. There are those institutions. And if you're interested in our recommendation, you can contact us and we can tell you. But focus on institutions that, that, that specialize in individuals that have failed USMLEs in the past and then still don't commit to taking step three because people without step three and with multiple attempts on USMLEs on step one and two have still gotten into residency without step three. So I'm very, very, you know, wary of, of recommending anybody to sit for step three. And I really don't care if there's some program directors that say, you got to take step three, fine. I'll make up for that by applying to 50 more programs, right? And I will wash those program directors off. So is there a way to find out if you are prepared to take step three? Like, is there a test there are there are you know national board of medical examiner practice tests and all sorts of things but it is tough to know if you're ready for step three i've known of many co-residents of mine that got kicked out of residency they thought they were ready for step three and they failed it two three four times and that was the end of it um, i've worked with many medical residency re-entries here at ac medical and they've retaken step three multiple times in the program which is not going to allow them to continue so it's very hard to tell whether you're ready for this exam or not. Really, really tough, especially if you're not in a, in a U.S. graduate medical education environment. Pretty tough. Hey, thank you so much, Dr. Mazzani. And this concludes this Future Docs podcast episode. If you're listening to this podcast, be sure to watch the video form on YouTube at youtube.com forward slash AC Medical Org. And for all of you considering to take step three or, you know, somebody who very rapidly told you, hey, if you want me to consider your application, take step three, and then you put your entire life and ERAS application on hold for this one program, my recommendation to you, don't do it. Skip over that program. You're going to waste years of your life just trying to chase after, you know, one program director that, you know, just probably told you, gave you a recommendation in passing. And that individual still has to go through an entire admission committee to to consider you and, and you know, um, so don't do it that way. There are systems in place, you know, trust what other medical graduates doing that are, that are successful, that have not had to take step three, but for some of you with multiple, multiple USMLE step one and step two, seek. And when I say that, I mean, I, I would say that if you've had three attempts on any of the USMLEs, you gotta, you have no choice. You have to 
start studying for step three and, and at some point taking it. But you got to do it within a year. Uh, don't 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 add four or five years to your life for passing this exam. If you have any other questions, email us at podcast at acmedical.org. Take advantage of our try us for free, free office hour pass, which is something new that we're doing, or just visit our website at acmedical.org. We'd love to hear from you. Thank you for your time, Dr. Mazzani. And for our future docs, we will catch you next week. Thank you, Dr. Rosas. Thank you for all of our audience and viewers, and we appreciate your, your support. We'll see you next time.